What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Steven. This is Steven and Stereo and in today's video we're diving into the new Jonas Brothers album, The Album. I'm very much looking forward to this. I just recently did their entire discography. I actually did it as a full uncut uh, album reaction. So I went through every single album. We listened to all the songs and didn't cut anything out. And that's over on Patreon. Links in the description. If you check that out, I also did the uh, Chasing Happiness uh, documentary as a full movie watch party reaction commentary, whatever you want to call it. That was really fun as well. So needless to say, in a very recent span of time, I have gone through all of their work and I've had such an amazing time doing it. I never knew how much I would like the Jonas Brothers. And I think that's a really important place to be is uh, being able to understand that just because something is popular, maybe you don't check it out or you don't listen to it or whatever, doesn't mean that it's not good. Uh, I think for the longest time, I had an assumption about what I thought the Jonas Brothers kind of sounded like, and I didn't think it was really going to be my thing. Um, and I'm so glad to be wrong about that. So this video right now, if you're watching it on YouTube, it's already up on Patreon as a full uncut album reaction. The YouTube version is going to be quite a bit shorter, a lot more cut out for copyright and pacing and things like that. So, you know, do with that, with that information, what you will, but we are going to start out with Miracle. I will say there's two tracks that I've already done reactions to, which is Walls. I actually did a reaction to that uh, on Patreon where they uh, performed on SNL. That was sick. And I already did Wings here on YouTube. So we've got 10 other tracks to check out. I'm looking forward to this. I've heard some mixed opinions on it and I don't really care about that. We're going to get what my opinion is on it. So this is Miracle. Oh, oh shit. Okay. Already obsessed with this approach that they are using of this like very like funk driven, like seventies influenced, um, like funk meets rock sort of sound. They do have the vocal ability to pull that off. And I'm glad to hear it happening so much on this first track. Oh, okay. This production is so sick. Oh, I love that acoustic guitar. So a couple things already stick out to me. Uh, one, I've definitely not heard them do this uh, style. I mean, we've heard bits and pieces of it. They've definitely had these like sort of like funky bass tracks before. There's definitely something different about this though. Their approach, there's a lot of energy in this. There's a lot going on in this production. I don't know if anyone else noticed that, but a lot of, you know, utilizing those stereo effects in that left ear, that right ear, a lot of sort of like vocal pieces that are kind of mixed down it's really cool. Like I'm a fan of it. Uh, it definitely is different though. And I could see how people may feel a way about this style that they are doing. I, for one have always like, since I've been checking them out, I've seen the Jonas brothers as this group that, um, due to the, the nature of the talent within the group, there's really not a lot of styles they couldn't pull off, you know? So like, this makes a lot of sense. And I also love the range that they are singing in those high notes literally fucking kill me. Okay. Montana Sky. Dude, I'm obsessed with this already. Oh, there is this backing vocal that is layering there and they've added some effects to it and it sounds so fucking sick. Also, this kind of reminds me of like the style that Harry Styles sort of like evolved into um, where it had this like 70s heavy Fleetwood Mac sort of inspiration uh, which I'm a fan of and it's really popularized that style again. So I'm glad to hear the Jonas Brothers doing something similar because they definitely have the vocal ability for it. This is so sick. Are you fucking kidding me? Like you can just hear it in that production. There's that harmony, there's layers. They have one layer track that has definitely got more of like, of this like effect on it. And it just sounds so beautiful when it's all put together. 
I love to hear this again. 70s inspired, you get that acoustic track just sort of like driving us in. But the thing that stands out to me the most is again, the relationship of the vocals in here. You know, after watching the uh, Chasing Happiness documentary and kind of hearing about the struggles that they had, um, like not only just as musicians, but also family members that are all doing this music thing together. What I really took from that is though it was so kind of like rough to see them kind of like go through the the struggles of, of sort of like going on hiatus, breaking up, things like that. What really kind of like comes to light in a track like this is it it did help like vocally for them to get out there and be able to like focus on some solo work and some endeavors they wanted to do. Because I know for a fact that like Nick, who was already incredible, came back so much stronger. And same with Joe. They just came back with different ranges. And so to hear them in these tracks like this is beautiful. Okay, the next one is Sail Away. Oh, that backing vocal, fuck yes. Um, I'm just gonna say that's probably one of the, one of my favorite things that I've ever heard happen from the Jonas Brothers. That last minute there, so many like wonderful things, not only just from like a vocal standpoint, right? That's incredible. Those trade-offs are absolutely wonderful. Imagine being in a room while they're recording this. I fucking, I can't, right? But go even further than that. You hear these production pieces start coming together. You hear these little tracks sort of building while that's all happening. And I don't know how you don't just catch a vibe and fucking fall right into the love trap that is the Jonas Brothers when you hear something like that. God damn. Um, I am really glad that they're doubling down on the sound as well. I was, you know, when it comes to the Jonas Brothers or like groups that are big like this, you will get a lot of different sounds throughout an album sometimes. One kind of being like, you know, we're pushing to try to get this like perfect single. Uh, and the other part is like, oh, we're just kind of like creating this this jam, this moment. Um, and while most artists typically have this sort of like vibe that they're putting out throughout the entire album, um, it's often like a little bit different. And I love that they're kind of doubling down on the sound because it works really well for them. I get that it might not be everybody's like, like cup of tea, right? It might not be everybody's little coffee, but to me... I just love hearing sort of the evolution of the Jonas Brothers, especially, again, being a more recent sort of inductee into the Jonas Brothers Hall of Love. I feel like hearing the sound just kind of like shows me all those pieces of that evolution that I've grown to really enjoy. Um, this next track is Americana. I love the sound of it, but I don't I don't care about the lyrics in the song right now because everything else sounds so fucking cool. Yeah, I definitely feel like I could live without the lyrics. Um, not that there's anything wrong with them, it just felt a little cheesy. Uh, I feel like people gave Halsey a really hard time uh, on a track that she did that was very similar to that lyrically. Um, what I will say about it, though, is I love that that style is still here. There's almost this influence. It kind of reminds me. Let me just look before I say this. Let me just make sure that he didn't actually. Um, OK, no. So anybody who listens to like hip hop and stuff, uh, Swiss Beats, right? He kind of has this this sound throughout all of his music. And this definitely kind of had that sound happening in the background. Um, the instrumental is super fucking cool in that sense. I really love the fact that you were getting those vocal moments that I really love, those harmonies. But again, I feel like the lyrics, just kind of whatever, but it's definitely still a banger. It's just not a lyrical banger. All right, this next one is Celebrate. Oh, I told you, they've been listening to a lot of ABBA. Oh, 
Hey! So here's the thing. I love the the sort of um composition of all these tracks, right? Like I love the production of it. I think the vocals sound incredible. The one thing that I'm noticing about this album already, and I know that we're only halfway through, so it's kind of hard to give a full judgment, but it's not very strong lyrically. I feel like these songs are very like, yeah, dude, you got this. But like no substance and like no, and I only judge that based on other albums from them where I've always felt like there's been sort of this um, lyrical like piece of most of the tracks. And it's always been fun to dissect that. Whereas I feel like, the lyrics have just kind of been whatever. Um, you know, all right. This is Waffle House. Um, this is the most played song on here. So obviously a single that I must have missed or I purposely didn't do because I knew we were going to do the album. Not sure. Waffle House. Oh my God. Such a good fucking vocal performance right there. No, don't get stressed. It's going to be Boom, 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 boom. Give me the banger and give me the lyrics here because this feels to me like it is this family affair. Again, we just uh, recently watched the Chasing Happiness um, documentary and there were a lot of very strong emotions in that, right? And it kind of brings me back to this track right here, which is, you know, we have this uh, headstrong father, determined mother. That's why we always felt like we were going to kill each other. The idea being like, you know, we maybe our parents saw like what we were doing and how it could be bigger. But all of that sort of um, would unravel at the Waffle House, quote unquote, like these family, these family talks or whatever. You would kind of have these things come and go. And, you know, everybody has that. My family had Denny's like when I was younger, we we're always at Denny's like multiple times a week it was my favorite fucking place to go a little bit harder when you're vegan there's not as much stuff to eat so it's been like 11 years of not you know going to the denny's regularly but that's what my family had and we would talk about things at the denny's and i can definitely relate to it what i love most about this song though goes right back to the fucking production there's so many beautiful pieces to this song to dissect um it is an absolute sin that it's only two minutes and 25 seconds because some of the different vocal cadences that were happening, um, uh, thinking about Joe's uh, verse here, holy shit, like one of my favorite things from him, uh, not that it was like this crazy, uh, you know, high note driven thing, but it was just that cadence and delivery, that little bit of rasp had a great amount of emotion. Then of course you get Nick's verse and Nick is absolute perfection when it comes to vocals. So of course it's amazing, but I love sort of the, um, you know, all the pieces in that chorus Come on. So many great fucking things to dive into. Mm. Okay. Vacation eyes. You know, William wants to let you know, at least in two tracks here, that he messes with weed. Okay. I love that. The idea that you're so in love with somebody, you know, you know, vacation eyes for a lot of people, that is the best thing, right? Because it's, uh, you're looking at this person that you have equated to the summer and you've got those vacation eyes, meaning you've got this like sort of daydream wonderland. You have not a care in the world. You're just sort of uh, enjoying every moment as it comes. And so when you are likening that to a person there's something so beautiful about that connection you can have with somebody where you're looking at somebody and it's taking your stress away it's it's bringing you to this calm state you are feeling adventurous and explorative and you know you have the duchy in your hand so you're a little bit you know blown right but at the same time you're just feeling so good about this moment and i feel like um i feel like that's what you want when you you know you finally like you find someone you really love they should take that sort of stress out of your life away, right? They should bring you that calm and happy. Oh. 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 
Okay, I'm happy with that song. I feel like that is a great amount of like lyrical value without having to go too in depth, right? But at the same time, you're giving me that mixed with that composition that I love. And this is the type of Jonas Brothers that I really love where you are being, it's not like Celebrate, where Celebrate was like, like it's a banging track, right? But like, it's almost like lyrically, it's just like, yeah, we got this. You know what I mean? There was just like no substance, but like Waffle House and Vacation Eyes giving me a lot more substance, giving me that sort of like, you know, bass driven love track, which I fucking, this is great. Like, I love the idea of sort of personifying somebody as the summer and a vacation and a stress free, um, calm person that sort of like eases your anxieties and brings you a lot of adventure and happiness. And we got that here. And can I just say I will die on the hill of the fact that the Jonas Brothers are so talented vocally, but I feel like they are, even though they are so popular, there's something about them that just feels like they're underrated. I don't know why. It's like they're, it's like they're fighting an uphill battle, but I have no reason to, to have that assumption. I just feel like more people don't talk about how good their vocals are. So I'm going to be that person. Anyways, this is Summer in the Hamptons. In the Hamptons. I'm deep inside your set, a different kind of warmness. <laughs> what? My heart inside your heads, a thousand wild horses. Oh my god. Give them a fucking award for vocals right now. Oh my god. Why is that so sick? Some of these songs are entirely too short. They're not like, I feel like they don't have enough time to like build more of that sound. It's like, um, you know what? I guess just because we're going with the sex analogies here, this is all foreplay. Like I want that moment where you're in my sand, a different kind of warmth. And I feel like we're getting there. You know, we've got the top off the pants are around the waist. We're not quite getting where we're going to be going, but we know it's coming. No pun intended, but then like the song's over and we're back to hearing the seagulls. And actually, now that I think about it, I wonder if that's what some of the issue is with some of these songs is they like, they build into something and then the song's over. And like, you know, it's, you know, we're, we're blue balling it here. Um, I will say, I love whatever they were doing with the vocals. You know, you know, the part I was pointing it out. Um, it's like, wah, wah, wah weren't weren't but like the way that they are pulling that sample it's so fucking sick okay this is summer baby oh my god where's that note Whatever is happening with the backing vocals throughout this entire album, I would like to give that person a hug because I'm fucking obsessed with the amount of just beautiful layered vocals and harmonies that are existing from that. It's so good. Oh, there it is. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Boom, 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 boom. You know, the other problem that this, that I'm noticing here. So a song like that, super fun, really high energy, beautiful fucking vocals. There's essentially the song stops at like two minutes and like 10 seconds, two minutes and 15 seconds. And then it's a fade out. And I like a fade out. Like I like when it's catching a vibe, but I like a five second fade out. You don't have to give me a 30 second one. I feel like it's going back to more of that tease thing that this album is where it almost feels like this is a sampler of the album that'll be coming out. It says the album. I feel like it should be like part of the album, you know, little parentheses, all these songs aren't finished yet. Meaning like there's like at least a minute left in almost all of these songs, except maybe, uh, what was the, there's one I listened to. Oh, sail away. I think that that was the perfect runtime. Like, I feel like if you were to add another minute of the, of the chorus as it was happening, it, then it'd be like, whoa, I think we repeated this too much. But the rest of these songs just like, 
they end kind of abruptly and then they put in a fade out and it adds 30 seconds to the song. And that makes me sad because I feel like some of these songs have some really great instrumentals and buildups and there's more that could have happened. It's not, it's not there. All right. Little bird. This just sounds like I have been transported to the seventies and I'm watching this beautiful magic of music unfold live. It sounds so beautiful. Look at that. Little 10 second fade out there, if not more. Fade in, fade out. What a beautiful song though. Um, I love a song which I'm imagining is about one of their daughters. And I love a song like this because that emotional depth is there. Something that I caught on very early on in my exploration of the Jonas Brothers is that there was some really like emotional pieces of music that they were able to put out and i'm hearing that here i like the simplicity of the lyrics while still giving you that meaning of you know you are this bird and i'm not going to hold you down i'm not going to tie your wings and make it where you're unable to go out and explore and live that world but like i'm trying to hold on to this moment and just appreciate this moment because this moment will pass and you will go on and you will find someone um, that you love and that you'll marry one day because you'll be able to spread your wings and enjoy your life. But for now, this is like, this is the moment. And it's so beautiful to hear the vocal styles coming through with this. And I'm, I, like I said, we, we did walls. So I'm glad we're stopping here because this is such a beautiful way to end this walls is as well. But like, I like that with everything that kind of went on, this is this beautiful kind of ending to this album because we're going to talk about this album and for starters uh it's not my favorite Jonas Brothers album but it's not for the reasons that you may think I actually love the style that they did here musically um it sounds incredible the production on this has got to be like the best production I've heard in all of their albums um so I feel like from a musical standpoint this is incredible I feel like they did all the right things um they you know found a lot of, they drew a lot of influence from the seventies, which I'm personally a huge fan of. If you couldn't tell every time a fucking bass went, boom, I was like, Oh shit, here we are. This is incredible. I'm here. Today is that, uh, the one kind of issue that I guess I have, and it's really only on first listen. So that may change when I take a road trip with this album, uh, because these songs all sound like perfect road trip songs. Right. But I feel like lyrically it's not their strongest um, and that may be on purpose. They may have wanted to go with a more simplified uh, version of this, of, of an album for them just to kind of be able to pick up on some of those really great things they did musically. And it's kind of, you know, that it's that trade off, right? Like you want to have a lot of space in between the notes. You want to have these really great bass lines, these super cool harmonies that are happening Well, you can't have a ton of lyricism at the same time because it would be too much. And I think that for that aspect, they did a great job with it. I think I just wanted more, you know, happiness begins, um, is my favorite album from them. And that's after doing the discography, even though I love their pop punk era, their, oh, their early days so much. I, there was just a level of, of um, evolution that it just like hit such a great spot with happiness begins. So I guess like it's a little bit hard because you know, I, you start judging it based on these other um, albums. And I, th I think at the end of the day, it's not that anything was like wrong with the lyricism. It was just that I wish that there was more, like I wish it was just a little bit more. And the other thing I'll say um, the run times on these songs are really short and that's kind of sad, especially when some of them had these like long fade outs and stuff. I just, I guess the, the whole time, all I'm thinking is I just want more out of this album. Um, either longer tracks or more lyricism or something, but I feel like I'm just missing something there. But for all of that, I got to say that musically, this is definitely like their strongest. I just love to hear them in this genre. They have the vocals to pull off styles like this and execute it with perfection. And that's exactly what they did. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to check out Patreon. I have done every Jonas Brothers album now.
as full uncut album reactions where we listen to the entire thing. So if you feel like I'm being like, wow, why is he being so hard on this? Go listen to all those other album reactions that I did. And you'll see that like, I truly love this band. And I think they're so talented. So it's a little difficult when you, you know, you definitely feel like it was going to be something better, which I try so hard not to have those kind of expectations. But like when it's a group you really like, sometimes it's hard not to. Um, but yeah, go check those out. Go check out the uh, Chasing Happiness documentary that we did a movie watch party on. And let me know what you guys think about those things. Also, let me know in the comment section here on YouTube, what are you feeling about this album? Like I said, I saw mixed reviews. I don't know what everyone is thinking, but let me know from like a fan standpoint. Uh, cause that's kind of like where I'm coming from here. Like I'm a fan of this group. And so these sort of like thoughts that I have, um, for this album are really just coming from that space. But overall, I think musically, sonically, it's absolutely fucking incredible. And I love the production so much. So let me know in the comment section, what you guys think. I will see you all in the next one. Peace.